Yeah. <laughs> Steve, welcome back to the legendary Chinwag. It, it, it's it's legendary. great to see you. You Thank sound you. like you just finished a huge meal, you know, and you're just <laughs> I like thought pushing you were back say from something the table. Else. I thought no. you were going to say something like I just finished <laughs> something else. But that's, yes, you know, in fact, I did just have a very tasty meal uh, not long before uh, recording our current episode. I had a really good uh, vermicelli salad with some roasted pork in it. A Vietnamese oh. vermicelli salad with oh, roasted delicious. pork. Delicious. Right? Man, I really love Vietnamese stuff. food. Me too. Oh, and stuff. Oh, yes. fantastic. I like it too. It's good stuff. I like. Well, oh, good to of. see you, Kimasabi. Thank you. Good oh, to see thank you. you, sir. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Listen, occasionally here at uh, at World Headquarters for Chinwag, we get some letters, and actually, we thought maybe we would read this interesting letter. Yeah, uh, it's fun. It's great to get these things from people. We get a lot of them. It's cool. And but I thought maybe we would uh, take a moment to read you this from one of our loyal listeners, Keith, in Boise, Idaho. I'm told it's. Boise, not Boise. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. I think I, I may Boise. have gotten it right. I knew a guy from Boise once who was like, no, 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 it's not Boise. And I, I, may, I might still be saying it wrong, but I know it's not Boise. I know that much. Anyway, out there in Idaho, Keith, shall I, shall I regale you with this? Yeah, Steve? please do. Hi, guys. I'm an airline pilot from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I live in Boise, Idaho. Now, I wanted to share a quick experience with you guys. Back in uh, 2006, my wife and I sat down our back deck on a Friday night around midnight, which is right on the Boise River, about two miles east of downtown Boise. Boy, I'm having to say Boise a lot. Yeah. So I better be saying it right now. <laughs> Wait, first of all, I got to yeah. interrupt right away, which is who goes out on their back deck at midnight in the in a rural place, I'd just be thinking Bigfoot right away. Like that would be scary. Let's but, keep okay, reading. Go ahead. Let's keep reading. Clearly, people are people have a lot of guts out there in Boise, Idaho. Courageous. It was very dark. You could barely see your hand in front of your face. We each cracked open a beer. This sounds great. These people have the life. <laughs> yeah. And a few minutes later, my wife says, "What's that?" Of course, because it was so dark, I had no idea where she was talking, but <laughs> what she was talking about. Ah, <laughs> uh, but I looked up in the sky and saw a very large object about the size of a football field that looked like an asymmetrical naval ship flying from west to east at roughly 3,000 feet above the ground. This is a guy who knows what he's talking about. Yeah. It was not flying directly overhead, but roughly a half a mile away. When it flew over, I noticed a string of lights, pink, blue, and white in color, covering the bottom as if a mesh net was hanging from the bottom of what? the aircraft. This is amazing. There was also a strange mesh-like material, almost like cotton, that was intermingled with the lights. I said to my wife, that's a goddamn UFO. <laughs> that was me. That was me being playing this. That's when I play the guy in the movie, when I play <laughs> nice. Keith in the movie. That's a goddamn UFO. <laughs> Keith. It may it made no noise while it was flying, and I watched it continue on its path for probably a mile, and then it made an immediate, very abrupt left turn, and for lack of a better term, at the speed of light, was gone. As a pilot, I have seen a handful of things that cannot be explained, and I've heard many stories from fellow pilots about glowing orange balls in the sky, etc. However, what intrigued me the most about your podcast was the relationship between Bigfoot and UFOs. Uh, uh, here we uh, go. Now here we get down here to we it. Go. Many years ago, a friend and I were talking about it, and I came up with the term IDST, which stands for Interdimensional Sasquatch <laughs> Travel. <laughs> I, Fantastic. I mean, man, Fantastic. I have a friend that was a Navy SEAL, and many years ago, they were in the Cascade Mountains for a six-man training expedition. Oh, this is getting, this is getting deep. Yeah, this is a letter. I know, this is like black ops. On the first <laughs> night, something was throwing baseball-sized rocks at them and harassing them at night. That's like a classic sort of yeah. Sasquatch thing. They had night vision goggles, but it seemed just as they were getting closer, it was suddenly further away. They were crossing a stream bed the next day where this guy saw Bigfoot tracks crossing the stream forever changed his life. Later in life, he spent a lot of time in the mountains of West Virginia investigating Bigfoot sightings, talking to state police and people that live there, etc. His stories helped form my opinion for IDST. Anyway, I want to say thank you to both of you. I love listening to podcasts. Can't believe somebody's finally talking about this stuff in a serious manner. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Me too. I gave you a five-star rating. Can I don't I know about serious, but thank you. No, I'm well, listen. <laughs> but as serious as I can be. So this is interesting. Yeah, you Very. know, I mean, there's a whole school of thought about Sasquatch and UFOs that they're. Well, that they're, I like it when when a pilot tells me a UFO story. I always perk up a little bit and pay more attention. 
yeah. because they know more about like when I hear the average schlub like me, oh. they don't know distances and speed, but a pilot does, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I, no, you, I'm inclined. You, yeah, you're and it's this guy, the other guy, the other guy's a Navy SEAL, and he's talking about seeing the Sasquatch and stuff like that. But the interdimensional Sasquatch travel, you know, that's the thing I was talking about about yeah. how I think it's some kind of interdimensional thing, or dare I say, something from the future that you're encountering in a sort of fluke, you really don't buy that, do you? Here's where, yeah, I got to part company with you on this. Now, I'm all, I'm with you on Sasquatch, but I part company on the interdimensional travel. That's where I have to draw the line okay. in the sand. Okay. All right. Well, speaking of interdimensional travel, let's get to this guest of ours today, because I think she's yes. visiting us from another dimension, frankly. She is uh, traveling <laughs> through time and space. Space yes. and time. She is bending space and time to her will. Our guest she today is quantum mechanics. Uh, she is quantum mechanics itself. She is a quark. She is a. <laughs> she is. She is. Uh, uh, she is proof of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. <laughs> you know what I mean. Our guest today is a fantastic actor and filmmaker, five-time Emmy and Golden Globe nominee. She has starred in dozens of films and TV series, including more recently Netflix's. Orange is the New Black, and Russian Doll, which she also yeah. co-created, wrote, produced, and directed. It's very good. It's great. Yeah. Next, she'll appear in the film His Three Daughters and the much-awaited second season of Peacock's Poker Face, which is also great. If you love those kinds of 70s detective shows, and I do, it's great. If that's not enough, she also directed the Netflix comedy special, Jacqueline Novak, Get On Your Knees. <laughs> well, we are thrilled. Thrilled is the word yeah, to have thrilled. her join us on Shinwag. Please welcome the incredibly talented and busy Ms. Natasha Leone. Hello. Paul, oh, your mic is off. Hi, Natasha. Now it's on. <laughs> Hi. Oh, God. How's that? Is that working now? Can Better. you hear me? Oh, oh, it's working. It's working. Wow, Good. where it's... are you? Where are you? Like a Malibu? Where is? Look at that. You're all like in the couch yeah, with the light coming through the window. What listen, is going baby, on? Listen, baby, <laughs> listen. You know what I mean? I gotta, <laughs> motherfuckers got to live. <laughs> where are you? Look at that couch. <laughs> I'm in my house. <laughs> that is some couch, though. It's a scam couch. It's like a... I went to a uh, some sort of a, a, a department store Christmas party and uh, I got a gift certificate and I said, how about sofas? I've never bought one of those. Look, there's my dog. Oh, nice. Oh, now this is, oh. Uh -oh. That's a matching, matching sofa. Look at this Holy fucking face. Holy mackerel. Wow, what great kind? dog. Holy cow. What'd you say about Columbo? What'd you just say? I said, it's your friend Columbo. <laughs> oh, in the background? Is that the poster? Oh, very I, sweet. I know that you're very famous for uh, saying Peter Fox sucks, right? That's you? I never oh, said that anything. Would not be Paul. That was not me. That could have been me, but not That's Paul. That's a weird accusation. That's a weird wow. thing to lead off with, I actually Natasha. came here. Just Paul, I, I came here you. to say, why do you have a Peter Fox sucks tattoo on your back? On my, on my ass? I'm at the base of my spine? We've seen the beach photos. Fox sucks? Oh, we've seen those. We have seen those. But you know what? That's not my ass. I don't know who that that's is. Not that's not, not my ass. No, Stephen, that's can, your ass. No, okay. it's not, ass. I got a ton of anti-Columbo uh, tattoos Are you serious on about that? Or are, you just, or are you just making that up? Nobody I never knows. would say that. It's now, I guess. It's a, now it is. Now, now it's a thing. Now it's going to be all. Now it's etched in stone on the internet <laughs> that I've said yeah. Peter Fox. It's a meme. Why? <laughs> On your ass in a bikini photo. Why would I say Peter Fox sucks? I would never say Peter Fox sucks. Jealousy, man. Jealousy? Yeah. That's one reason. Maybe. Yeah. That's one uh, reason. But wait a second. You're a Columbo fan, right? You're a big Columbo fan. I I, I, I do, of course, love Columbo, but I, uh, but I guess I really love Wings of Desire. Uh, oh, yes. And I really love uh, Woman Under the Influence. Uh -huh. Wings of Desire. All of those things. Woman Under the Influence. Husbands. Do you like husbands? That movie? What if I said, no, fuck husbands? Like you Well, have that'd be your, interesting. That's my beach body tattoo is I fuck, like, husbands. fuck husbands. No, this is right. It goes for both tits. That's, yes. that's, the, that's the Cassavetes line. That's where you yeah. draw the line with Cassavetes. Yeah. Yeah. When, <laughs> why did she get that tattoo? I know she's really passionate about Cassavetes, but she fucking hates. Hates husbands. She hates Ben Gazzara. That's absolutely. He Gazzara. hates Ben Gazzara like Giamatti hates. 
It's beautiful. <laughs> Basta with Gazara. Basta, Basta with Ben with Gazara. Gazara. Did you yeah. ever run into Ben Gazara? Did you ever meet Ben Gazara? I wish. I did. I think I met Seymour Cassell. Oh. I, uh, not bragging, just name dropping like a motherfucker. That's but pretty I, good. Um, That's pretty good. Seymour Cassell. I'm not sure he clocked it, but I did. Uh, <laughs> big moment for me. Not so much for Seymour. <laughs> oh, well, my wasn't God. Ben Gazzara, wasn't he in uh, Big Lebowski or something? Didn't he like have like a late career appearance? He had in a Big late Lebowski? career. He had a, he had a yeah. career bounce. He had a career yeah. boom. I think it was Buffalo 66 that we're thinking of. Oh, Buffalo 66. Buffalo 66. Remember with Angelica Houston and they're in the house? Yeah. And Vincent brings him back to the family. and Vincent Gallo. That's right. And Buffalo yeah. 66. And he brings a little Christina back there. And, and he's right. like, this is my fucked up family, Angelica Houston and Mangazar. I didn't even know that I knew that until this That's moment. incredible that you just pulled that out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Listen, this brain is a mess, but I don't Listen, know. Listen, this is yeah. already cooking. This this episode of this show is You're cooking like already. An archive. I, yeah. I've only brought one thing to our meeting. This is the book I'm reading. Putting Ourselves Back in the Equation by George Mooser. Now, what's the story with what's the sub? Why physicists are studying human consciousness and AI to, okay, to unravel yeah. the you mysteries are in of the universe. You were in our wheelhouse. Yeah, but, so we can, so here we go. But, uh, uh oh, I'm only on page eight, boys. <laughs> Listen, that's <laughs> yes. further than I would get. I wouldn't get past that fucking title, which was pretty yeah. challenging for me. But I've read the back and I'm a big fan of this guy, Carlo Rovelli. And uh, <laughs> oh. I base season two. Season two of Russian Doll is pretty much just a direct rip of this book of his, uh, The uh, Order of Time. Ravelli. Oh, God. Yeah. What's the story? What, to tell me about Car. Tell us about Car. I didn't the know this. I mean, the cartel? it makes sense. It makes sense that you would be into that. You're into the physics. Yeah. But no, no, no. What What's the deal with physics with you? Tell me. Tell me about it. Uh, so I think uh, when I uh, let's say dropped out of life, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. in the early aughts, I. Mm -hmm. uh, I was sort of trying to figure out uh, what the game was all about. And mm -hmm. uh, the only, the way I found uh, uh, my way back home, I guess, was through science. Cause I was like, oh, this is oh. something rational, not, uh, not warped. Uh, it's not Fellini esque. It's sort of <laughs> practical and uh, much larger than anything I can conceive of. So I uh -huh. sort of put my uh, focus there as a sort of white noise sound, like a, uh, uh -huh. Some people enjoy the waves or whatever uh, crashing, uh -huh. and I enjoy uh, uh, listening to a uh, to sort of the quantum physics audio book as I fall asleep at night, cool. you know, while nice. playing Zelda or something. <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I find that to be peaceful, and I don't necessarily uh, claim to understand what I'm uh, sort of uh, hearing or thinking, but maybe it's uh, the same kind of relief other people get from, uh, mm -hmm. I guess, uh, cults, uh, <laughs> uh, something like that. For instance. Uh, yeah. For example, no, which may, yeah, yeah. No, listen, I can sometimes see the, the comforts of Scientology. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, here it comes. You know, yeah. no, 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 listen, I didn't say I'm Wait, how do we it. switch to Scientology? Just, no, right, 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 science. It. So here's, what? Some, here's what I wanted to say about that. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Yeah. Here's what I wanted to say about that is that. Oh, now but, it's about Elrond? No, 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 Here's what I want to say. Didn't yeah. you find, though, that eventually with physics and quantum mechanics and stuff like that, that in fact it is kind of Fellini-esque and it is kind of insane? I mean, because it seems, that's my thing about that stuff is that, yeah, it's supposed to be all rational and then it's nuts. It's the whole, the cat's both alive and dead in the box and all that mm. stuff. Yeah. And it's all Turns this kind of- Turns out Schrodinger was a pedo. Not was a lot he of really? people talking about it. Yeah. Oh my God, oh, here we go. for his cancellation. <laughs> Well, nobody cares. Forget his physics. He was a pedo. They just oh, yeah. care about the fucking is a cat alive oh, and dead. Oh, God. Here we nobody go. Nobody cares about his personal life. <laughs> Let's cancel Schrodinger. Jesus. I'm going to cancel Schrodinger. That's the only reason I'm on this fucking podcast. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, we've done a few episodes on that already. Uh, a pedo? Uh, but, so no, we haven't. <laughs> no. no, we haven't. Well, oh, open the box and guess what? <laughs> Schrodinger's a pedo. That's what's yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. The uh, cat's like, uh, I got to get out of here, guys. Uh, <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, both in this life and the next. All right, cool, cool combo. Am I alive or dead? Give me the fuck away from but, this guy. Okay, but how did you like? What what was it about this stuff that like <laughs> that relaxed you? Like, is it like just the you would hear them like 
the pop, you know, like a, somebody is reading like a book about quantum mechanics and you're like, yeah, this kind of shuts off my brain or your your brain would follow it and it would like help de-stress you. Answer like, questions yeah. or something. Yeah, I guess uh, all of the above. And uh, also you, Mr. Giamatti, that uh, it also uh, is ultimately completely Fellini-esque. But I think that therefore it makes more sense of this sort of uh, underlying circus that we must participate mm -hmm. in and mm -hmm. have sort of uh, uh, seemingly chosen to engage in. Uh, so I, I it, it sort of is uh, supported by the fact that, like, ah, yes, you know, like uh, the music of the spheres and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, string theory and the many worlds and whatever else, dark matter. Now I understand why the whole thing is, this whole operation is so fucking nuts. Mm -hmm. Do I know why I'm still involved or engaging in the rat race at all? I'm not sure, but I guess the stakes have never been lower is all I know. <laughs> and so it sort of is grounding. And uh, uh -huh. I guess as a writer or uh, whatever, it's a, uh, it is there's uh, so much uh, fun story to glean uh, uh -huh. through a certain kind of lens because uh -huh. uh, yeah you know it's not a ton of people are trying to do a half hour comedy from that place so it really seems like an open market uh, and it's uh, <laughs> a big market yeah. hey there was a big bang theory there was a big bang theory sorry to, I hate to tell you <laughs> uh, it's true when you're right you're right I hate to tell you I've been Chuck Lorried yet again uh, <laughs> Chuck Lorried. <laughs> Yeah. Well, here's so so basically, you're saying to some extent, if I follow you, and I yes, don't, sir. I'm not going to guarantee that I am so far, but I'm trying. Okay. I'm trying. Is that you? 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 What you liked about it is it's it's kind of starting. Well, not starting from, but at least it gives you a ground a grounding in absurdity and things being crazy. Shit is crazy at a quantum level. So maybe that sort of explains or makes it more comfortable to live in a place and among people and in a society and connected culturally to other entities that are chaotic and insane and absurd. Nice. I, I would say uh, yes. And uh, I also do like the sort of mathematics of it, the, the oh. structure of it. So I, I quite enjoy, I think, uh, a sort of like boundary disciplined life in a way uh -huh. or, uh -huh. or form in which there are sort of uh, rules of play within uh -huh. which to go, you know, completely Crazy. mad. And so Amazing. I think that part of it is also, you know, just a, a sort of structural mathematic thing uh -huh. that uh -huh. makes makes everything else make more sense. Like, oh, that's cool. Uh -huh. I see that there's something, and on some level, I think it's probably why we all have a, a, a um, such uh, boners for Kubrick. It's like there's, <laughs> he really is, uh, you know, especially in something like You're right. a clockwork, it's, 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 uh, you really see that there's, yes, like the, uh, there's, okay, here's like a, a crazy sped up, uh, uh, a three way and uh, Beethoven and whatever, and the <laughs> madman driving this car and the shot and, you know, the ultra violence and all these things. And, but there's a mathematics to it that's uh -huh. sort of precision that allows the brain to sort of, process what it's seeing on sort of multiple levels at all times. And that's why we think of him as such a giant. That's interesting. Super disciplined. His stuff is yes. super disciplined. Yeah. But it's, can, yeah, I actually really love uh, the movie Barry Lyndon. It's one of yes, my favorite that's movies. Great. I can see that film. about you. And but I know it's me with the powdered wigs and the, and the hosiery and the buckled shoes. No, no, no. But I, I genuinely, I. Really? Why? Why do you say that? I guess because I the could, low morals. No, I I just think that it's uh you do beautiful work and it's uh I could see that you're somebody who would really enjoy you know being a part of that kind of a, a picture. I, I would. I mean, I think I think we yeah. all would. But but what's interesting about that is there is this incredibly contained. It's all about this society where everything is mathematically everything is incredibly rational, and yet yeah. it's completely batshit underneath it. And yeah. that, I mean, it's kind of the inverse of what you were just saying, though, too. It's like almost the opposite of Clockwork Orange. Or, no, maybe not. Well, I but mean, it's strange love, too. Yeah, his stuff is all about these structures holding in all the fucking absurdity and insanity. But it's like mathematically, everything's very pristine. Yes, and it's sort of like within that uh, framework. I mean, really, you know, I mean, Peter Sellers, like, what a guy, I think also canceled probably like uh, me after this podcast. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's again, like there's this, it's this fascinating thing of like the, the ability to sort of do a sort of a version of a comedy that sort of is transcends like a, a, a language. It's not, it, it's not comedy. It's not anything. It's yeah. sort of Sellers like go, going off. And again, it's within 
like even that sort of war room is so structurally sound. You know what I mean? But him too, as a performer, incredibly disciplined, apparently. Yes. And like incredible discipline about those accents, incredible discipline about oh, everything. Yeah, right? And it made, and completely out of his fucking mind. By oh, the yes, way. at the expense of his family, I believe. Everything. Yeah. Like totally out of his mind. Wait, wait, wait. In what way? Was he doing was he doing substances or he just was a, a wild man? In I his think own he was mind? just an egomaniac, mostly, well, right? It sounds to me like he maybe had some mental health issues, if that's oh. the phrase I want to I want to use. I mean, it sounds like he was, I don't know. He sounds like he was crazy. I mean, in some way, right? I mean, it's, it's, he was. I guess, is it a time, co- a time narcissist- crime kind of crazy though? Like, you know what I mean? I, I, I guess at that time. Yeah. I, it was really ah, just, you ah, know, I being, yeah. being like a narcissist was yeah. uh, okay. sort of business as usual. Yes. And so I wonder if he knew that he was being sort of like a, you know, whatever it was, emotionally abusive or sort of like, yes. you know, so solipsistic uh, yes. uh, to be at the expense of his own family members or crew members or whatever. Who knows? Or to what extent is something like that facilitating yeah. a lunatic? I mean, yeah. it's also facilitating a lunatic who's clearly, you know, clearly a narcissistic loon. Yeah. And, and yeah, so he's getting permission. So talented. so talented. But also incredibly, I like this whole, I like the incredibly disciplined thing allowing you to be insane. Yeah, it's there's like, a uh, there's a theory called the weakness of strength where somebody like this has an amazing ability to like inhabit a character and be these different people chameleon style but then that makes them difficult to live with as like a husband or a father like it's it's the thing that makes them amazing at their job that also f- makes them like hell in like a personal realm and this is very common. That's super common. That's like everybody. Yeah. Right, exactly. It is. It is. But on the deepest level becomes sort of like the real game then is like the talent to back up the talent or whatever, that that's really the, the game of the riddle of life or something, it seems, as you grow up, is to try to figure out how to, uh, you know, also be a, a human being, you know, <laughs> like so. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, yeah. I, th- I think I enjoy, I enjoy, uh, it's also sometimes just reading, uh, but uh for these reasons that it sort of like sure. kind of grounds everything and it's sort of right sizeness of oh right like uh, it's a very basic shit of just like the tiny speck in a, a much bigger picture so like um you know it's a good perspective i can't say that i'm holding on to it uh, <laughs> on a moment-to-moment basis but Listen. it's a, a nice enough touchstone Look at that house you have. That's a very, it's a very ordered environment for you to be bonkers in, in a yes, sense. Yes, essentially. Yeah, I, I, I may, keep it I very may. tidy. Listen, yes. if I may, I'm going to quote uh, French writer Gustave Flaubert. Oh, right please now. do. If I as may, usual. if I may. I'm going to yes, catch usual. As per usual, I'm going to quote yeah. French, French, famous French writer Gustave Flaubert, who I believe said something along the lines of, be the perfect bourgeois in your life, but be insane in your work. Oh. Mm. That's Interesting good advice. Thanks for joining yeah. us on Chinwag <laughs> for this week. Let's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very nice. I killed the vibe, didn't it? Way to suck the air out of the room. <laughs> it did, and I think we were all like bourgeois, huh? Okay. Well, you know what I mean. He Why meant did- like. Be, like, put it be up that rock way, right? Be that, be that, be that really, be that perfect middle class like guy. Be that guy. Be that person who lives everything just right, so that yeah. in your work you can go bananas. Oh, you like a math person anyway? Are you good at math? Uh. I mean, no, not especially. Uh, but, you know, I, I guess uh, rationale is a very, like, you know, the Hofstetter endeavor, like, you know, I'm a strange uh-huh. loop. So it's all sort of, it is inherently, uh, I guess that's where it really uh, j- jumped off as a, as a you know, profession. Um, it's so an awesome show. It became it's a fantastic. sort of thing. So it's a, it, but it became a sort of a, um, you know, like a, 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 a necessary aspect of the, uh, uh, the job, uh, but it was uh, the job that I created because that was yeah. the area of interest, you know. But yeah. uh, I do think that um, before I dropped out of uh, college, uh, 
because uh, I, I kept expecting this thing called tuition. I thought we'd been saying that. Uh, but <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, the goal was to be like a philosophy, right? It was like a film and philosophy double major. And um, there you go. So I think it really the an expedition to um, uh, try to figure out. Where are we going right now? Are we going to go make a sandwich? What are we doing? Where are we going? Are we going to get some soup? What are we doing? We're getting root beer, pee, or a snack so she doesn't bark. Uh, okay. But this is exciting. I wish the, I wish the folks at home could follow this. <laughs> Yeah. This is an yeah. action sequence for the first time yeah. with Chinwag. I mean, we're yeah. just walking all over the fucking house. It's a house. body cam. It's yeah, a, it really is incredible. Yes, it's a, it's a, you get the dog a snack so the dog will just remain peaceable? Yeah, that's not what you do for yourself. Like, I'm like, uh, let me just grab a snack. It's a little workout. <laughs> no, understood. No. Understood. No, that's nice. I just want, I want the folks at home to know exactly what's going on in this exciting moment. It looked for a moment like Requiem for a Dream. Uh, but <laughs> I, all it was was a greenie for root beer. Uh, it was a greenie for root beer. My my boyfriend recently did a funny greenies bit. Uh, he said, I, I just had one of these. They're delicious. And I was horrified. And th <laughs> thankfully, it was a bit. Did he try the food and he thought it was delicious? Yeah. I'm he, frequently uh, tempted to eat the cat's food when I'm looking at is it. Is it wet I'm, food really? or dry That's, food? Uh, either one. Well, the dry one's not as not as tempting looking as the wet food. And frequently I'm like, That's gotta taste good. I mean, Nobody wants the dry food. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'll get but stuck like, in my teeth. And I, I don't yeah, know. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it. I'll be honest, I don't know why everyone is always so freaked out about Wait a second, is it true? Like, wait a second. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. Speaking of bunker. <laughs> Speaking of bunkers, not I'm not going to go there. Not that bunker. Yeah. But are you some? Are you a prepper? Did somebody tell me you're a prepper? Oh, uh, only philosophically. I can't say there's uh -huh. much action. There's uh -huh. much action behind it. Uh, you don't got canned foods all lined up in your pantry. Yeah, and but I will say that, like, I definitely will date, uh, like, a dad who's a, a prepper. You know, I mean, like, somebody who I know can get me. I think my attraction to men is definitely like. You're going to be able to get us out of this fucking dystopian nightmare <laughs> yeah. that's coming, right? Because I can't this even read a map. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that is definitely how I'm gauging men. I think that's pretty sound. I think that's yes. wise. Yeah, when everything goes sideways, you need somebody that can, like, fix a car and, like, hunt yeah. an animal or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's my type. It turns yeah. out, yeah. Huh. But uh, there's many ways that, 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 that can happen, you know what I mean? Some of it... Uh, the, uh, intellectually, they can get you out of it, or physically, uh -huh. they can get you. Out. Yeah, I'm just saying that there's uh, there's options. There's all kinds of men that can handle. <laughs> there things. sure are. There sure are. No, that's 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 interesting. <laughs> I think there's less and less men that can handle that. To be honest, like uh, uh, it's probably true. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why, because Steve? You think there's a crisis in masculinity? Steve, is there a crisis in American masculinity? Is that where we're going? Somebody had to say it. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> But I look at my old man, he could do anything. I can do half of that, and my son can do half of that. That's and the next generation will just will be entirely digital and and half like a uh, robot. Or, Is that what you think? I, I you do. Think I think that, that skills be, uh, are disappearing, like yeah. actual skills and and sort of manual labor skill, skills are disappearing. Yeah, well, that's probably true. But I think maybe like weaponry sort of familiarity might be up. Uh, so I guess it depends what the scenario is. No, I think. Uh, I've seen some videos that will turn ownership. Yeah, like I think that there's a, I got a pop up ad on my uh, social media for like a tank. <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck do they well, think the I algorithm? need this for? Well, yeah, yeah. Not, you know what? I'm not surprised you did, frankly. I mean, for, Makes sense. for, for like a surplus <laughs> tank, really? No, it's like a new car. And I was sort of like, I was shopping for a car and clearly the uh, tech is listening at all times. And I'm sort of like, I guess maybe an Audi, but who the fuck wants an Audi? I don't know. Uh, what are these cars? Do you got a Prius? Like, I'm from New York. And uh, so uh, suddenly I had a pop-up ad for something that was like a fucking tank. <laughs> really? <laughs> it was, yeah, it was oh a my God. sort of doomsday vehicle. Uh, really? That'll, Troop transport. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like a safe place for your M16 and the whole nine. Uh, yeah, so. well, that's true. And I suppose you're right, Steve, too, that they're all getting like first-person shooter training on things. So it's like maybe that those skills are up. But you're right that I mean people I I don't think people know how to fix a toilet anymore particularly, you know. Well the, the old the old uh, there's some evidence that guys that fought in like World War II and in Vietnam 
oftentimes never discharged their weapon. But guys that fought in like Iraq and Afghanistan, because th- here's the argument is that they are they were sort of weaned on gaming. Huh. They fucking pull the trigger and never stop pulling the trigger. They just keep like emptying the magazine over and over again. Interesting. Which because could that's be a what result you're supposed of, to do. Huh. I don't know. Very interesting. It may not well, be effective, but no, that's super interesting. And it makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And actually, there's a they I wanted to ask you a little bit about your horror film, Natasha. That there's a some of these guys that are fighting over there will actually create like a narrative where the enemy is a zombie. And they'll get a patch, and as they kill guys, they'll put patches like a zombie killer on their sleeves and shit. Oh, really? And uh-huh. Anyway, that's not the question I wanted to ask. But I'm sorry, did that sentence start with "I want to ask you about your yeah, horror film"? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. And but you meant sorry. it in the abstract, <laughs> yeah, right? In like, the abstract. <laughs> there's not a film anyway. I made that I missed about uh, <laughs> zombies and. Did I make Jacob Flatter? I wish I made Jacob Flatter. I think, uh, I, listen, I got a couple of those in the a couple of those in the, a couple of those in the, a couple of those in the in the back catalog that I've forgotten about. I've been fucking decades. It could have happened. I no, mean. I wanted to ask you about this film Anti Birth, which oh, okay. you did, and that was like really disturbing. And yes, uh, thanks. You know, yeah. it's that kind of body horror genre that is really I, I'm very squeamish about it, but it mm. was really I mean. If you're you were trying to really upset people, it was effective. I was upset. Ah, you're welcome. By it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's too bad. Uh, is that is that the stuff though that you like? You know, I mean, I guess it depends. Uh do I love freaking? I mean the exorcist, did that horror? Is it filmmaking? I don't know. Uh-huh. I would say like, am I the guy that really just wants to see a bunch of like blood splatter or splatter? No. Uh-huh. Uh, uh Texas Chains. I'm, I mean, like that's so well made. It's a great movie. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's I mean. Great so movie. it's like I think I do love uh, filmmaking, and I am. Uh, have you seen Talk to Me, the this recent film that the Philip Poo brothers made uh, with Sophie no. Wilde? It's fucking bananas. Like, really, it's so good. I on a filmmaking level, and it is. It's terrifying, you know. Um, Jacob Ladder is one of my favorite films. Back oh, to that, yeah. uh, great one. But I, I don't know that in general. I'm like, uh, I, I don't, I don't think I love a, a B movie. Um, uh-huh. I, uh huh. I you like a good movie, and if it happens to be a horror movie, fine. Yeah, I think I, or uh, horrific or something. Exactly. Um, and then also uh, to Anti Birth, it's a uh, my friend, this guy Danny Perez, who's great, who done a sort of like all the uh, visuals and stuff of this band Animal Collective. And this is a, uh, I guess now maybe a, a, a decade ago, this movie. And uh, my best friend Quali Seven, he was in it also, and uh, I also got to produce it. And um, uh, so it was really about, I guess, going on his ride of uh, his first feature, and you know that kind of a thing. And I. Uh, did like philosophically what he was after. Um, mm-hmm. I uh, I'm somewhat interested in uh, body horror sometimes. I guess like Cronenberg. I mean, obviously, mm-hmm. it's fucking magnificent body horror. Uh, uh-huh. Rational too uh, does a, a sort of it found its way to, to body horror, but it wasn't uh-huh. intentional. Like sort of the uh, giving birth to myself while in my uh-huh. mother's body on the uh-huh. uh, the train tracks. Uh, or the, I guess the uh, subway platform um and yeah, that, that ended up crazy. being a sort yeah. of philosophical body horror that yeah. sort of evolved in the writer's room of you know an actual sort of uh russian doll that was still just trying to you know touch this uh thematic north star of like uh i don't know making a uh, you know peace with one's own wounds on a, a quantum sort of a trauma solving level mm-hmm. uh but it was interesting to then realize that below the level of consciousness maybe what i was after was this sort of larger questions about uh, the feminine body or the idea of like, you know, I'm at that age of, you know, what is it to have a child, not have a child, make uh-huh. those choices and um, all these things. So I don't know. I mean, it, uh, questions within questions like they're sort of made um, uh, for me, at least tracked uh, structurally in a way uh, that that was sort of like a, the next step. I, I don't know uh-huh. that in a vacuum, I'm like, a body heart, but like fucking Jeff Goldblum in the fly. My oh. God, it's fucking impeccable. I was, I saw, I saw that recently. I hadn't seen that in a long time and I forgot just how fucked up that movie actually was. Yo. Uh, yeah. It was so much more fucked up than I remembered it being. I think I blocked a lot of it out as a, as a youth, as a child. Yeah. I don't think I could handle a lot of it. When's the last time you've seen Videodrome? I haven't seen that in a long time either. Yeah. I haven't, my kid, God bless him, is really into those movies. So I got to watch yeah. him with him sometime. Um, Videodrome was fantastic. Is that, is yeah. you Slither? Is that Cronenberg? 
Is that slither? slither? What is slither? Uh, I don't know, but I could Google it. Uh, yeah, let's find out. Google it. Uh, see. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, we'll get the guests to Google this while we have yeah. a... Slither is... Wait a minute. What is Slither, Steve? Is that a recent thing? No, I thought it might have been one of his oh. first movies. Uh, maybe. Uh, I could like, be thinking of, the, of a different... Uh, you're uh, thinking, so there's one in 1973 and one more recently. Your friend, uh, Jimmy Can, in it. My, and, my friend, uh, Jimmy Can? Jimmy Can yeah. is my friend? Uh, I'm just decided, and uh, your ex girlfriend, Louise Lasser, you're cheating on her, I believe. Oh, you're my God. Married, with, with Jimmy Kahn. <laughs> with Jimmy Sally Kahn. Tellerman at the time. Louise Lasser. Uh, yeah. And uh, I was, uh, I was, Peter Boyle I was right is your dad, and you're a nepo baby. Did Ellie right? Gould show up at some point to. Uh, uh, actually, he's not involved, and it turns out the director is not Cronenberg. It's a oh, slither so a movie total about detour. a car thief on parole. Um, oh, yeah. I've like, seen that movie. I, I've you seen might that be thinking movie. about Thief. That's also I think. No, no, Jimmy no, no. I've seen, Dream. I've seen Slither. I've seen yeah. Slither. I've well, seen it. Of course, it. I made all of your fucking friends of it. So I'm <laughs> not right. shocked. Listen, I was deeply embroiled with all those people. <laughs> Sally Kellerman. Oh, my God, Sally Kellerman. What a peep suck. Can you still say that? Oh no. Uh, then, uh, there's also Sliver, of course. Uh, that's uh, Sliver. Sharon Stone. Sliver. That was Sharon Stone. Hot picture. Hot picture. Okay. A very hot picture. Okay. I've seen Slither, and it's interesting because I saw that movie, and I thought to myself, Jimmy Kahn is an interesting actor. Because, yes, he is. Because I thought in those early years of Jimmy Kahn, I think, yeah, pre-Godfather, around the Godfather, a lot of different movies. He plays, he does, he plays these very kind of schmoey guys. He's not playing the tough guy all the time. He plays yeah. kind of a schmoey guy. And it's interesting because you think of him as a tough guy all the time. Because you think well, of, because Sonny, of the, yeah. the godfather, Sonny yeah. Corleone, and then Thief and stuff. But it's interesting. He plays a lot of kind of, in that movie, he just plays this kind of not super bright, kind of schmoey, schmucky, <laughs> sad sacky <laughs> guy. That's Jimmy Kahn. So, uh, not to say I wasn't listening, because uh, we all love Jimmy Kahn, but Slither was also a 2006 James Gunn. Uh, what? So, uh, and this seems to be a body horror movie. I'm looking at it. The, the poster has, like, leeches or something in a bathtub. Yes, here we go. And Elizabeth yeah. Banks is involved, but uh -oh. still no Cronenberg. So we've now solved oh, three I cases. Remember that movie. I appreciate yeah, you I chasing that. this down for yeah. me. I remember I appreciate that. that. I remember Thank that. You. Uh, yes. The only one I've seen is Sliver, which would exist as a typo. Uh, so. <laughs> yes. I remember the Liz Bank giant bathtub full of parasites picture yeah. very well. There we yes. go. You do? I, I, I remember that picture. I remember it vividly. I do remember seeing that movie because I enjoy things like this. You do? Like horror. Oh, you do? Yeah, I like horror movies. Oh, I good. Do. He is a huge I, horror fan. You know what I'm getting enjoy. you for Christmas? Um, oh, really? You're going to get me a I don't, little, <laughs> I don't know. What's coming my way? Like a value <laughs> pack terrified. of uh, DVDs you found in a bin and <laughs> somewhere? No, oh, a fetus actual, in a box or something. Uh, oh, an Jesus. actual horror film. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. You're just, just going to come over for the holidays is what's oh, going to happen. Oh, that's right. Uh-oh. Baby's boy, coming oh boy. home. Your series, Russian Doll, does seem really existential to me. And I heard that you were into existentialism. Uh, and what I want to know is, like, how'd you get into it? Uh, like, yeah, go ahead, Paul. No, before we talk about it, I need it defined. I need, oh. I need a definition because I'm not sure that I really actually know in a lot of ways exactly what it means. Uh, okay. Now, Steve's a philosopher, so he can tell us like the very technical The dictionary definition. definition. Yeah, no, or great, whatever. Great, great, great. Yeah, because that's exactly, yeah. Okay, so the traditionally like it arose during, like right after World War II, because in Europe everything was shit. And even before that, Nietzsche had said, God is dead. So the idea is basically the old formulas for meaning and purpose are gone. So the existentialists like Jean-Paul Sartre and Camus, which actually they had a big influence on like German expressionism and also film noir, uh. they thought like you have to make the meaning yourself. There's no, uh -huh. no religion can give it to you. No science can give it to you. You have to make your own purpose by your own choices and your own decisions. Uh -huh. in your actions. Uh -huh. and, and so a lot of people were frightened by it, but it had a huge influence on Because it film. seems to mean, it seems to mean there's no guideposts. You can do yeah. whatever the fuck you want. Right. It seems to Potentially. Be what it means. Uh -huh. It scared a lot of people, yeah. Uh-huh. 
is is Kierkegaard an existentialist? Yeah. Like right. This idea of He's anxiety. A proto. It goes anxiety back, is, doesn't it? Uh, anxiety is the dizziness of freedom, that kind of a thing. Is that? Uh, yes. I'm asking you as the professional. Yes, that's the, he's. Say that again. What is, hold on. What did you say? Yeah, say it again, Natasha. Anxiety is the dizziness of freedom. Uh, that's yeah. a Kierkegaard, right? So is that sort of in the realm, would you say? Absolutely. That's like your, he said anxiety, which is, we know this word angst. And it means dread or anxiety. And then Cam Camus and Sartre said, you're condemned to be free. It's very unpleasant to be this right. free because right. it makes you anxious. You have nobody to ask, what should I do? So it it has this dark night of the soul and that can be nihilistic. So you could end up being everything bagel, just totally nihilist, or you can rise above. And that's what I think is happening in your character somewhat in Russian Doll. This is just me. But you can sort of figure out your way and then you come out of nihilism and have like positive purpose, but you have to make it yourself. Yeah, that is sort of that journey from nihilism to sort of connectedness right. is uh, yeah. sort of the, the character arc there and then sort of like uh, a level deeper of, um, you know, okay, great. Now that you're a participating member of society, now what? Because uh, it comes with its own questions all over again. Um, and uh, incidentally, I do think that Anxiety uh, the of the Freedom is maybe uh, the title of a Ted Chang's short story, uh, which is just be. a... Uh, a way of, uh, of naming him because I love hey, him so much. We talked yeah. to him. We talked yeah, to he's him on, on the chin show. We had him on because we, we yeah. love him too. He's awesome. Yeah, he's he's a pretty uh, uh, one of a kind fellow, yeah. and uh, I do think that it was. Uh, it's it's all the things you're saying. It's like uh, that uh, Camus quote. I remember like really in my you know uh, tough times. I thought about it so much. Like. Uh, Something like the only way to deal with an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your uh, very existence is an act of rebellion. You know, sort of yeah, this idea huh. that awesome. um, in a, essentially, a, I guess. Uh, Choosing to keep living. That's like a suicide. Rather than kill yourself, the radi yeah. most radical thing you can do is to continue living. Is that right? Isn't that sort of what he was talking about? Kind of. Or also like, you know, that in the... Uh, you know, absurdity of the riddle that is the game of life. Uh, the thinking man, who's uh, most of us, let's hope, is uh, sort of like doomed to sort of question these things. And uh, as a, a teenager, uh, that person from uh, which I never evolved, uh, I mostly just run by this inner child and with the attitude <laughs> of that same uh, sort of pseudo intellectual teenager on acid. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It just sort of like it feels like, oh right, you know, like. Thank God nobody can actually, you know, read my thoughts or something. Like I'm allowed to exist in my own, in my own space in this life, in this, in my own, in my own way, and uh, for better or worse, you know what I mean. Mm. Like I, uh, it's a, it's I guess a way of sort of like uh, claiming free will in a in a world that sort of says no. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we've made the rules already, and so uh, you know, get on the bus um, and. Uh, uh, so no, I don't think of it as a sort of a necessarily negative. I guess, uh, but now in more uh, uh, you know uh, daily life, I think everybody throws it around, and it really just means yeah, you know, sort of having any sort of existential crisis or whatever. Yeah. It's like yeah. in every, I'm sure that you know, have you ever played a character that's not an anti-hero who's not having an existential crisis right. of some yes. sort? So it's. Right sort of become yeah. so widespread that it can mean just about anything. It uh, does, kind of. And that's where it gets me a little confused. And I've gotten a little lost sometimes with it. Because I'm like, what exactly? It's kind of been devalued a little bit because people throw yeah. it around so much. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, probably not surprising that they're throwing it around so much because, you know, it's probably a, uh, meaning a, a reflection of our modern times and sort yeah. of a global soul, soul sickness that people are uh, suffering from that it's become so uh, workaday. Yeah, soul sickness is a good phrase because it seems like we, in our culture, we know how to chase like pleasure and happiness, but we aren't talking about purpose at all because the, the old language is just religious. And if you're not religious, you don't have a new language yet for talking about purpose. It just seems like you're being pompous or something to talk about you know, the meaning of life, you know. Oh, you should just. I, I love it. I mean, I, that's uh, on day one of a. Uh... Uh, the Russian All Writers Room is funny that we're talking about it so much here today. I guess it is sort of that type of uh, the two we use, uh, but uh, <laughs> these type of guys. But it was I came in with you know Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, oh, and great. this uh, Doug Hofstadter, I Am a Strange Loop, and uh, uh -huh. uh, 
that Wilhelm Reich uh, for beginners. Uh So, you know, orgone therapy and sort Uh of like it's that question of a pleasure-seeking machine. Uh Uh, And I sort of was trying to reconcile, I guess, that question of like what, uh, you know, how do you make a half-hour comedy that asks these questions? Uh, Because wouldn't that be fun? You know, you're making me want to do a half hour comedy about a guy who's stuck in an orgon box. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so by the ever, way, do you by the way play in the orgon box? By the way, box. it ain't. Like, it ain't. You're going to get chock full of yeah. orgon energy. I'm, I am a, I'm starting a Google Doc. Right that away. guy, that no. guy's a whole other ball of wax that's super I mean, interesting to me, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Steve, do you know much about him? Not, have you I read that, that stuff? N- no. Natasha, have you read? Uh, I've uh, never uh, read it uh, uh, enough. And there's also a, really? a great uh, documentary on him that's super weird. Have you seen that? No, no. Uh, yeah, it's also, I mean, it's, he's a pretty uh, interesting character. I mean, like some of these guys are sort of like crackpots in a way, like a Kurzweil or a Ray Kurzweil or something, but they're yeah. also kind of fascinating in their uh, sort of like their first thesis. It's just that it gets out of whack as time goes yeah. on. Like, yeah. Your friend Elron. Uh, so okay. All right. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> Take it easy. And, and steady. Uh, but I know. Yeah. Nice. All right. That's all I need now. Yeah. But uh, no. But We're Wilhelm kidding. Reich. Wilhelm Reich had this whole. Yeah. I mean, his whole thing was the basis of his whole thing was the orgasm. Was was it was yes. that the, the people needed to that it was this uh, sort of freeing. Uh, concept and and actual experience that was going to sort of like that freed people up for i don't know what what he based this in what kind of biological things research i'm sure Uh, it kind of makes lots and lots of research but i but but i don't know what okay all right with mice he was he was getting mice (laughs) off he was getting mice (laughs) off in a a maze they were all getting off but he then he had this whole theory that there was this orgone energy that came from space. And I'm not exactly yeah. sure. Do you know what? And that you could sit in these boxes that gathered orgone energy and yeah. you would sort of build up this sort of the equivalent of just of like just getting off constantly. Holy you were getting shit. it. You were getting uh, the orgone energy. And he got, yeah. he got sort of like jailed. TM. He got he thrown in jail. Jailed. A little bit like TM, just, yeah. just a touch. But And he just got thrown in yeah. jail, and I think he got in all kinds of trouble. He did. I don't know whether for that or for what, but he got, yeah, he got yeah, in trouble. Yeah, yeah. World War II came around, and a lot of people, uh, uh, you know, had a bad time. Um, yeah. I, uh, He's interesting, now. He's very interesting. Yes. Now, now here. Another canceled guy. Uh, uh, uh Woody, of course. I think Sleeper, right? And Sleeper, and then he walking oh, around with that little yes. silver ball. He yeah, goes yeah. in the and orgasmatron or whatever. Yeah. yeah, so I'm assuming yeah. that that's another uh, Reichian sort of so a, a little touch. riff, little little witty riff on Wilhelm Reich. Well, 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 that was dandy, wasn't it, Steve, once again? That was a lot of fun. Another great chin wag. Fantastic. (laughs) Amazing. We hope that you enjoyed the chin wag. Thanks for listening. Um, By the way, this is is interesting news. We have a bonus wag coming out on Friday. That is fantastic. Yeah, keep a sharp eye out for that one because that will be sensational. And, uh, no, I, uh, the, some listeners can't get enough, and uh, <laughs> it's it, it's much appreciated. And you know what? Now thirst now, for gin. Now wave. they're going to get more than enough, Steve. <laughs> so we we'll just keep adding it yes, every indeed. day. And don't forget to like <laughs> us, follow us, rate us, review us, all that good stuff. We love to hear from you. Until next time, friends. Wag on. Chinwag is a production of Treefort Media and Touchy Feely Films. Hosted and executive produced by Paul Giamatti and Stephen Asma. Executive producers for Tree Fort are Kelly Garner and Lisa Ammerman. Dan Carey is executive producer for Touchy Feely. Our series producer is Rachel Whitley Bernstein. Original theme music by Luke Topp, with additional music by Via Mardot. Oscar Guido is our executive in charge of production. Tom Monahan is head of audio for Tree Fort. Audio production supervision by Matt Dyson. Editing and mixing by Jeff Neal. Animation created by Alex Sokol. Research assistance by Aiden Brooks. Lastly, for more information, go to chinwagpod.fm and find us on Instagram or TikTok at chinwagpod or on Twitter at chinwag underscore pod.